Welcome to a brand new Timmy's Top 10. And today we're going to look at the top 10 sorceries of old school Magic the Gathering 1993-1994. Now to make this list I've looked at the following sets. The ABU core sets of course and the first four expansion sets Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends and The Dark. When you take the cards from this card pool you get to a total of 70 sorcery spells. Now to make a good selection for my top 10 I've looked at three main criteria. The first criteria was the impact of the card on the game. The second criteria was how playable the card is in how many different decks. For example All Hallows Eve is a great card but you can only play that in a specific type of deck. My last criteria was how often does the card see play in the top decks at the tournaments. So these are my criteria. Now before I start with the top 10 list, I am very happy to announce that Timmy Talks has a brand new sponsor and they are actually sponsoring this video right now and I'm talking about 3 for 1 trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for 1 Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with Timmy Talks Top 10 Sorcery Spells. And we are back here with the top 10. Let's start with card number 10. Here we go. And on number 10 we have Fireball. This sorcery for 1 red and X reads Fireball does X damage total divided evenly rounded down among any number of targets. Pay one extra mana for each target beyond the first. Now Fireball is really this classic, right? It sees so much play in so many decks. The fact that it's one red and X makes it really easy to splash. It's being used in aggro decks, it's being used in mid-range decks, it's being used in control decks, and even the deck loves using this Fireball to win games. You know, Fireball is all over the place. And I guess when you say Fireball, you automatically also say Disintegrate, I haven't really made a choice here between Fireball and Disintegrate. I just put them both here on spot number 10. I do understand that Disintegrate is good against those regeneration creatures like Satch Troll. I personally kind of like Fireball more, but it's also the nostalgia speaking. Probably. I don't know. Anyway, Fireball here on number 10. Now let's continue to number 9. And on number 9 we find the first restricted card of the list and I can already tell you I'm not the last one and that is Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is a sorcery for 1 red and 2 that reads both players must discard their hands and draw 7 new cards. Now Wheel of Fortune is a great card for the simple reason that you get to draw 7 new cards with one single magic card. That is insanely powerful. But it gets really broken when you use this card in specific strategies. For example, when you have an aggro deck like Counter Burn, you know, it's a deck like many aggro decks that has the tendency to run out of steam because all your spells are really cheap to cast. So usually your opponent is like half dead, but not dead yet. And then you have no more cards in hand. That is of course where Wheel of Fortune comes in handy. You refill your hand, you find some new burn, you play it out, you find some new creatures like Surrendip or something, play them out, keep the pressure on your opponent. Another reason why it's really good in aggro decks, like for example an Atog deck, is because it also activates Black Vice. If you've got a few vices on board but your opponent manages to just play out his or her hand really quickly, you can just refill the, refill the hand of your opponent, you've got double vice, they've got seven cards, that's six damage, right? And besides the aggro strategy, Wheel of Fortune is also great in combo strategies because when you play combo, you're usually looking for two or three pieces out of your deck. Your Wheel of Fortune is going to help you dig for them, find them quicker with a wheel in the deck. And also Wheel of Fortune is quite handy in specific strategies like an Underworld Dreams deck or like I already said, a deck with Vice. So overall, Wheel of Fortune, it's just a card that you see all the time for the simple reason one magic card, draw seven new cards. That's insane, even if it means that your opponent is also drawing with you. And now onwards to number eight. And on number eight, we see another restricted card and another card that's all about card draw. And of course, I'm talking about Brain Geyser. 
Brain Geyser is a blue sorcery for 2 blue and X that reads draw X cards or force opponent to draw X cards. Now when I was making this list I wasn't quite sure where to put Brain Geyser on the list. I mean I know it deserves a spot in the top 10 but it's kind of difficult because it's a card that has 2 blue in the casting cost making it kind of difficult for certain decks to play it right. All the other cards in this list are really easy to splash but with Brain Geyser that's not the case. Still you do see a lot of players trying to splash it in or actually deciding to go more towards the blue direction because of Brain Geyser and that's of course for the simple reason that this card gives you card advantage. Like I've seen so many matches where it was will this Brain Geyser resolve and if so you're gonna win the game. Also Brain Geyser gets better when you play with power. When you've got all the Moxin and your Lotus you've got a lot of cheap mana and that only feeds into the power of Brain Geyser. So yeah Brain Geyser ridiculously strong also with Mana Drain by the way. If you combine uh, Mana Drain into Brain Geyser that's kind of like living the dream and understandably so you see this being played in a lot of you know white blue X decks as we call them those white blue control decks but you also see them in, in, in decks you just splash blue for power and just try to splash that second blue for Brain Geyser and it's actually quite easy in the old school format because you've got City of Brass, you've got the Dual Lands, you've got the Mox, you've got the Lotus so it's not that hard to get double blue but imagine if this card would be one blue and X. I don't even want to imagine that would be insane. By the way have you ever noticed the brain all the way at the end in the art? Have a look it's really tiny but um, it's pretty cool. Anyway Brain Guys are here at spot number eight and now let's continue with number seven. And in place number seven we find the one and only reason people keep splashing green in their decks it is Regrowth. Regrowth is a sorcery for one green and one that says return any card from your graveyard to your hand. And this is one of those cards that gets even better in those five color decks, right? If you splash in all the power and the restricted cards, which are of course very powerful, then Regrowth lets you play them again. I mean, I've seen so many matches where people play Time Walk, Regrowth, Time Walk, you know, and then you've got two turns instead of one, which is just insane. Regrowth, a very powerful a card for very obvious reasons. Now onwards to number six. And on spot number six we find the second blue card in this list and after this I can already tell you there's one other blue card in the list and here on number six we find the legendary Time Twister. One blue and two for this sorcery that reads set Time Twister aside in a new graveyard pile. Okay that's a pretty cool sentence right at the start of the card. Um, and then it says shuffle your hand library and graveyard together into a new library and draw a hand of seven cards leaving all cards in play where they are. Opponent must do the same. So this is basically a wheel of fortune but then you also shuffle in your graveyard and there is some added value to doing that. Of course when you have specific combo decks and maybe your key pieces are in the yard you can get them back. It also helps you from getting decked by like a millstone deck for example and it's really good if you play with a lot of burn like a counter burn strategy. You'll shuffle back in all those bolts you just pointed at your opponent and you're probably going to draw them again in your in your seven you know and you can just keep bolting your opponent. I can tell from experience it can be quite frustrating. It's also really good to get those counter spells back from the yard and shuffle them back into your graveyard. Uh, sorry back into your library of course because they were in your graveyard but I think you get the jest right and perhaps you're thinking Timmy shouldn't this card be higher up on the list? Why it's all the way up here at six? Shouldn't this be in the top three? I kind of agree and I kind of disagree. I'm going to try to explain why I put it on six and again feel free to completely disagree with me but the top five cards I've got from now on are kind of cards that people almost auto include uh, in their list if they're building a top uh, tier deck and the Time Twister is a card that you don't see in all those lists. You see it in a lot of those lists but it's not always an auto include. I mean I'm not sure if I'm making sense to you let me know in the comments if I'm not but that was uh, my main reason to put it on number six and not uh, further down the list. Okay so on number six we've got Time Twister now let's go to number five. And on number five we find the only white card in this list and the card that is so good when you're behind on board you probably already know what I'm talking about it is Balance. Balance is a sorcery for one white and one that reads whichever player has more lands in play must discard enough lands of his or her choice to equalize the number of lands both players have in play. Cards in hand and creatures in play must be equalized the same way. Creatures lost in this manner may not be regenerated. So Balance is just 
Awesome, this card can be Wrath of God, Armageddon, and a Mind Twist all in one if you time it right. But if you don't time it right, it's also good. A Wrath of God one-sided, Armageddon one-sided, that's of course also super powerful. Mind Twist one-sided. One of the things I love about balance is if you get Mind Twisted and then you top deck your balance, I mean, that's just so much fun. You're like, oh, remember what you did to me the previous game? When you asked that horrible question, how many cards in hand? Here's a balance, baby. That just feels really, really good. Um, yeah, so I mean, balance is here. I particularly like balance in a deck where you play with a lot of non-creature artifacts and a lot of enchantments because balance doesn't count them in into the equation. So then the card really shines. Also a reason why it's quite good in the deck, for example, because you have a lot of GM day tomes out there. So it doesn't count those cards in. So that's a, an advantage, you know, and something to think about. But most people play this card in their deck because it's just so good when you're behind. You know, if you're getting beat down, if maybe your opponent, like I said, already mind twisted you earlier, has more creatures on the board, has destroyed most of your lands, you can still get back into this with balance. You know, also when I'm commentating uh, on matches, I often say, if he can now top deck a balance, he still has a chance. And that is what balance does. It gets you completely back into the game and all of a sudden you can still win it. And I've seen it time and time and time again, players winning on balance. So it really earned its spot here in the middle of the list on number five. This is balance. And onwards we go to number four. So the card that just didn't make it in the top three, but got so, so close. And that card is mind twist Ooh, this is this card i've got so many bad memories of this card mind twist is a black sorcery one black and x opponent must discard x cards at random from hand if opponent doesn't have enough cards in hand entire hand is discarded whenever my opponent asks me how many cards do you have in hand i kind of get nervous because i know it means or a balance that's like the best scenario or the worst scenario it's going to be the mind twist and the thing with the Mind Twist is it gets even better if you play it in a deck with power. So if you play it with Black Lotus and a Moxin, for the simple reason that you can then just quickly ramp up. And then if you have that Mind Twist in your opening hand, it can get very one-sided and it can be very painful. And I think when you play Mind Twist actually in a deck, or I know actually in a deck without the power cards, it's still a good card, don't get me wrong, but it's hardly as powerful. I play it, for example, in my Disco Troll deck where I don't play with any power. It's mainly uh, reprints from Revised. So I also play with a copy of Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And Mind Twist there just isn't that scary. I mean, it's still good, you know, but if you have it in your opening hand, you're not going to do much with it. You have to wait until you have enough mana and then your opponent has already played out quite a lot. And then when you tap out, it sorts through speed to discard the last like three cards in the hand of your opponent. Again, it's still good, but then you pass the turn. Your opponent gets to untap and do his stuff. And you basically not wasted a turn, but you used a turn to cast Mind Twist. I guess if you use Mind Twist in the way that it's meant to be, and then with meant to be, I mean, without ramping up quickly like crazy do broken stuff i love the broken stuff by the way but then mind twist is much less scary but it is really scary in the old school format and again i mean i don't like the card but i also accept that it's there it's part of the game and sometimes you get twisted it happens and sometimes you twist i mean it's part of life it is what it is here at number four my twist and now we're going to dive into the top three. Oh, wait a moment first honorable mentions I cannot make a video about old school magic and sorcery spells without mentioning these three. Eureka, All Hallows Eve and Shahrazad. All three cards do something super powerful, super broken and kind of go beyond your standard rules of magic. I mean, these cards make an impact. Eureka lets you cast all the spells or permanents, I should say, from your hand and your opponent can do the same. All Hallows Eve, the creatures from all graveyards come back to life, come back onto the battlefield that's huge with those weird delay counters. Is an enchantment? No, it's a sorcery, but it's got counters. It's complicated. That's All Hallows Eve. And talking about complicated, then we've got Sharazad, where you play a game of magic in a game of magic in a game of magic. It's like Inception in a magic card. I mean, it is awesome. I also love the flavor of Sharazad. I love the flavor of all these three cards, actually. It's amazing. And, um, you know, if, if this list would be about cards that do something unique, these would probably be in the top three, right? Because it's so cool what these cards do. But like I said in the introduction, I'm basing my list on 
how good is the card in your average deck and of course all these three sorceries they can work really really well but in their own specific environment so you need to build a deck around them and they kind of deserve that as well these are so unique so i had to mention them here in honorable mentions and now let's continue to the top three and on the number three spot we find demonic tutor i mean demonic tutor is so good it can tutor for all these cards so shouldn't it be number one well maybe but i've put it on number three i mean it's really tough when you get into the top three what card to put where i've put it on three so demonic tutor a sorcery one black and one that reads you may search your library for one card and take it into your hand reshuffle your library afterwards so again this is one of those cards and i've said it before in this list that gets even better when you've got all the broken stuff in your deck, right? Demonic Tutor is often used to look up the Ancestral Recall. Some people jokingly call it Ancestral Number Two, um, but I think Demonic Tutor is of course much better than just that because you can take any tool that you need out of your toolbox and especially in a deck that plays with a lot of silver bullets, you can just pick that card out. Whenever you've got Demonic Tutor in your deck, it's like a plus one for all those cards, right? For example, you're playing two Blood Moons main against a specific deck that can be a complete hoser. So with Demonic Tutor in there, you're basically playing with three Blood Moons because you can use the tutor to tutor for it. And, you know, a City in a Bottle, another card. It can be super good against specific decks. So you play a one-off in your deck. The moment your opponent has a Library of Alexandria out, you can tutor for your city in a bottle and you can destroy the loa and destroy whatever other arabian knights cards are on there and i could just continue with the list there are so many silver bullets in old school and you know demonic tutor just gets you one step closer to all those silver bullets so it's just a super good uh, card to just get all the tools that you need out of your deck what about that balance that i talked about earlier you're behind on board top deck to tutor you can tutor for the balance boom get back into the game you know tutor is just the perfect card to get those silver bullets it's incredibly strong incredibly powerful but it's not on number one as a matter of fact it's not even on number two so what do we have on number two let's take a look and on number two we have the last blue card in this list and it is made by amy weber i love the art very iconic this is time walk time walk a sorcery one blue and one that simply reads take an extra turn after this one that's all that's what it reads can you imagine by the way that in testing they wanted to make this a common card a common that would have been insane everybody playing four time walks like okay i'm just gonna take an extra turn i mean in a way, I understand, because taking an extra turn, it is kind of boring. It's not very special. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to take an extra turn. But of course, in Magic, it is super powerful. And again, taking an extra turn all depends on what are you going to do with that turn. So in certain decks, this card is better. And in some situations, it's just like a cycle card. You're cycling your card away. But I mean, in the worst circumstances, it's a good tempo play, right? You're going to have an extra turn, meaning you're going to have that extra draw. So you're kind of replacing your own time walk. And if you're going to find the land, you're going to get ahead on land. So it's, it's a tempo play in the worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, it is a you win the game. I mean, how good does it feel when you play like a time twister and in your hand you find that time walk? You play that time walk, meaning you get to untap with your handful of goodies. That's the best feeling in the world. And of course, Time Walk is again really good with cards like Regrowth, cards like Fork to copy it to get even more Time Walks. I mean, the ability to get an extra turn for one blue and one for two mana, it's just insane. It's not surprising that this card comes back in all the top decks. Anyway, it is not on number one though. So what is on number one? Hmm. I, I cheated a little bit with the one spot to make this list interesting. Maybe that helped you to get an idea let me give you another hint on the art you see a contract it's also a card that actually never sees play anymore so why is that number one well let's have a look and the number one of this top 10 sorcery spells list of magic the gathering 9394 is contract from below contract from below is this sorcery for one black only one black and read what it does it's insane discard your current hand and draw eight new cards adding the first drawn to your ante remove this card from your deck before playing if you are not playing for ante now this card is probably the best card in magic the gathering it's completely broken and i'm sure the designers at the time thought yeah but what if you only draw garbage and you just put an extra card in for ante that's a huge risk you could lose two cards from your deck 
Yes, but when you're drawing seven new cards for one black mana, you're probably going to win anyway. So the extra ante, it doesn't matter because you're going to win the game. You're going to get them back, you know. If it would say, for example, you have to give that card to your opponent, it is now your opponent, so not even in the ante zone, then maybe, but still it would see a lot of play because you're winning the other card back in ante. Anyway, um, you may be thinking, why is this on number one? Didn't you say in your criteria list that you would look at cards that are played in decks and that have a lot of top finishes. Yes, I did, but I kind of cheated. I thought it was fun to kind of surprise you here on the number one spot. And I think if you are playing for Anti, this of course is the best card out there and the best card in the game. We do know, of course, that we hardly play for Anti anymore. It was never a very uh, popular way of playing Magic. There are a few groups that still play Anti, by the way, which is quite fun. I sometimes play Anti with my brother when we have our sleeveless revised decks and I can win like a hill giant or something and he can win a giant spider. This, you know, that's just fun. But anyway, um, this is number one. I'm sorry, I've been a little bit cheeky with you. So I guess my real number one in the list was Time Walk. Again, that is my opinion. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite sorcery is and, and how you feel about my list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you disagree at some of the choices that I've made? Are you missing certain sorceries? I can already tell you that, for example, Armageddon was in my mind as well while making the list. It just didn't make the cut, but I was really, really thinking about it and maybe it should have been. Um, but yeah, there were some hard decisions to make and I made them. And again, this is my personal choice. So, uh, you know, who am I? Feel free to completely disagree. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And uh, talking about that stuff, if you have a moment, please like and share this video on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you enjoy these videos and you like what I do, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks where you can find out how you can support the channel. It already starts for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?